Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. And of course, nobody votes for, for these justices to, to take their power, right? That's not how the, uh, the, the justices are appointed. They are appointed by the president of the United States. You have to be nominated by the President of the United States. Your nomination needs to be approved by the Senate. And finally, the President must formally appoint you to the court. Because the Constitution doesn't specify any qualifications, in other words, that there's no age, education, profession, or even native-born citizenship requirement, a President can nominate any individual to serve. So far, six justices have been foreign-born, at least one never graduated from high school, and another was only 32 years old when he joined the bench. I'm going to be 32 in October. I should fucking be appointed to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, man. That would be awesome. I fit all of those things. I, I know nothing about... I've never been to law school. <laughs> I, I cut a much finer figure in a robe than Joseph's story. True. <laughs> I feel like I'd fucking look great in a row. Like on that alone, right? You know, <laughs> this that entire would be audience in Ukraine, we should be the Supreme Court right now. I feel like we right can now. do that right now. Yeah. One, oh, universal man. basic income. Two, Mitch McConnell shuts the fuck up forever. Three, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Nailing it. Look at all these fucking decisions I just made. <laughs> Three, nobody can ever tell me what to do. I get all of the chocolate. These are amazing. I feel like nobody can contend with these decisions. Intelligence agencies are unconstitutional. <laughs> Intelligence agencies are unconstitutional. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Look, <laughs> when, you have, when you have a president that, that, that appoints somebody with this much power, it pretty much makes the executive, the, the courts, the pimps of the executive branch. That's really all they do. The president's become a hollow placeholder for a judicial monarchy. And that's what some people think that the Supreme Courts are, right? And, and here's the thing, the Supreme Court is supposed to be apolitical to ensure that the Constitution is upheld the way that it's supposed to be upheld, you know, like for the fucking people. But the courts are like the most political branch of the United States government. First of all, you can't be apolitical when you have a political leader that appoints a judge for life. For life, they appoint the judges, right? That's a very political decision to make. Right? And I wager to say that the judge making decisions over their interpretation of the constitutional, constitution and the law determining how people will live their lives for the next 30 years is like the most political decision that you can make. 
even the interpretation of the Constitution itself has become a political argument, right? A majority of conservative judges think that the Constitution and its amendments are rigid and never changing. And a majority of liberal judges believe that it's a living document that evolves with the times. And just the mere fact that amendments exist means that the document wasn't meant to be as rigid as some people want it to be. And these Supreme Court judges don't even see every case that comes through their doors, right? They're, they're very selective about what cases they, they choose to see. And even the selection process comes from cases that have to come up through the, the lower courts. They can't just pick and choose some of these things. They have to come through the lower courts and onto the desk of the Supreme Court, which means that a majority of these cases uh, get decided on by the lower courts and, you know, uh, one side or the other doesn't like the outcome, so they try to appeal it, they try to send it to the Supreme Court, and nothing happens. So a lot of these cases, a majority of these cases, are just in legal limbo. But even though they make it sound like a right, nobody is entitled to an appearance at the Supreme Court. That's entirely at the discretion of the justices. And they choose very carefully. Only a small number of cases get to the Supreme Court, and it's getting smaller. Roughly 8,000 cases are submitted each year, but only 80 cases are accepted. That's a 1% acceptance rate. And to get to that 1%, most cases start at the bottom. The federal court system consists of three layers, and the lowest is the district level. If you lose in a district court, you can appeal to the circuit level. Most of the United States is divided into 11 circuits, but there's a 12th for DC and a federal circuit that mostly hears patent and military cases. Above the circuit level is the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, as long as you don't count the basketball court, that's above the Supreme Court. And look, really, they're not taking the most challenging cases once they get up to the Supreme Court, right? They're whittling things down on the cases that they feel like they want to take. And really, after five years that like super senioritis sets in, you're not going to take challenging cases, right? You, you're just, you're just going to fucking coast playing basketball till you die. That's, that's how 90% of the judges die is they fucking pull a hammy and they never recover. And they're done. <laughs> Look, the Supreme Court has only uh, decided on one case involving the Second Amendment, one case. And in that case, uh, they decided on behalf of guns. They were like, yay guns, right? <laughs> It took them till 2015 to make a decision on gay marriage, to say that gay marriage was completely full and legal in this country. And it wasn't like the Supreme Court was itching to make a decision on gay marriage, right? They, they, the only reason why they made the decision that they made is because Americans, a lot more Americans than they thought, were pro-LGBTQ. And on top of that, Mexico had already legalized gay marriage. And the courts were basically like, well, if it's good enough for Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have a new plan. And it's that uh, I'm going to call up all of the Supreme Court judges and let them know that uh, Mexico has like Medicare for all and universal basic income. So maybe they'll, they'll make a rule. <laughs> put that shit into law. <laughs> And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placon, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H 
www.thebigcoachmarketingmentor.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on what, when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.